So, this module is called Drones and Origin Story. Now, every good hero has an origin story, and drones are a bit of a personal hero of mine. So, where did they come from? Well, it was way back when, in 1896. So, this is before manned aviation. Unmanned aviation, as they called it at the time, was something rather like a large, clunky, steam powered wooden vessel with great big wings. And in fact, it's rather reminiscent of what the International Space Station looks like today. A great big cylindrical body with bat-like wings protruding from it. And Samuel Pierpont Langley decided on the Potomac River to launch this beast of an unmanned vehicle off of a rail. So it was a steam-powered wooden aircraft that was the world's very first drone. A lot of people think that drones are modern things. But drones, remotely piloted aircraft or unmanned aircraft systems, have been around for a rather long time and been very useful in that time too. So let's just pause for a moment and think about what we call a drone. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet, right? Except when it comes to the bad PR and the misunderstandings about what drones can be used for, it seems that what we call them is actually quite important. So here are some acronyms that you're probably hearing if you're starting to get involved with the drone world. A UAV. UAV stands for Unmanned Aerial Vehicle. Says what it, it does what it says on the tin, right? It's pretty obvious. Okay, so then another one is RPAS. R-P-A-S. Remotely Piloted Aircraft Systems. Or you may just hear RPA. Remotely Piloted aircraft. And so drone really is kind of like a modern media word describing what typically has a lot of letters and acronyms attached to it. Now we have to forgive scientists and aviators for using lots of acronyms, but they are rather off-putting to the general public. So to be able to interact with a drone on an emotional level, we don't really call them RPAs or RPAs or UAVs. We tend to slip straight into using the word drone. Interesting factoid about the world of drones. Back in World War II, when the US was preparing to join the conflict, they were using things called radio planes, which is effectively a drone or a remotely piloted aircraft. And these things were about three or four meters in wingspan, painted bright red, and they had little propellers on them. So they looked like really very, very small planes. They were controlled by radio waves, and this is why they were called radio planes. And they were used by the US Air Force to practice dogfighting practice. Well, you don't really want to be shooting at another friend in a plane. You want a target that you can see and you want to be able to practice. And they were doing this just before they came over to Europe to take part in the D-Day landings. Now, one of the most interesting factoids about that particular project using drones is that there's a very famous person who started her very first photo shoot in a factory where they were making radio planes. And you'll see in the ebook a link to this story. And it amazes me to this day that I have anything vaguely connected or in common with Marilyn Monroe. But Marilyn Monroe was a radio plane engineer in World War II. So if people say to you that drones are a bit boring or a bit annoying, you can always say to them around the dinner table, well, did you know Marilyn Monroe was actually a drone engineer in World War II? So drones as an origin story is never very simple. They are, of course, being used and have been used for 20 or 30 or 40 years in research, but also in 20, 30, 40, 50 years, 60 years, really, in the military side of things. I know more, and we'll be talking more in these modules all around the non-military uses and the commercial uses and the research and the scientific uses. But drones, as we know it, have been used in places as hot as the Sahara Desert and as cold as Antarctica. They are literally a global environmental monitoring paradigm. We have drones that are as small as the palm of your hand. We have drones that are 60 meter wingspans flying up at high altitude. We have a very diverse drone ecosystem. And it all started from a bloke called Sam flying a wooden steamboat, launching off the Potomac River. Who'd have thought it?